This video shows the recommended method to install AFL's wrapping tube cable, WTC, or a similar cable into an apex sealed splice closure. The recommended tools for the apex closure are basic cable tools and a can wrench, plus all locally required safety equipment. Remove apex dome from box and press flash valve on top of closure to relieve all pressure. This first step is required when installing a new sealed closure or opening in field during service. Simply remove cap and depress needle to ensure all pressure or vacuum is released. Replace cap and tighten. The apex base are six ports with orange port plugs, each holding the same diameter cable. There are also optional ground studs with removable bonding linkage between studs. This assembly includes a ground lug to attach to a shield bonding kit. Use the mount insert as a reference for port designations. Determine which ports are to be used. Ports 1 and 2 are typically used for backbone cable due to the ease of routing to the basket. Ports 3 and 4 are typically used for branches. Ports 5 and 6 are typically used for drop cable. Any port can be used for any cable as needed by the technician. This is a two ground stud model. Remove the locking ring, pulling the locking ring handle to disengage the locking tab from the ring. Once disengaged, continue opening the handle to open the locking ring clamp. The locking ring is expanded and easily removed from the apex closure. Adjust the apex closure until the mount insert and orientation key are facing up. This will ensure the closure slides out basket up. Now slide the apex base out from the dome. Place the dome in an area so that the O-ring remains free from dirt and debris. If the O-ring is contaminated, simply wash off with cold tap water. Apex can ship with zero, one, or six splice trays pre-installed from the factory. The optional Apex X2 closure stand will be used in this video. This stand allows the Apex closure to be secured in any one of six positions and provides maximum flexibility while working with Apex. The closure can be secured with or without the ceiling wedges installed to hold the apex base directly to the stand. Simply place the base in slot of the stand and align apex to be basket down. Engage and lock the two retention clamps securely on the base. Verify that both are locked and apex is secure. Remove both Velcro splice tray retention straps. Remove splice trays from apex yoke to allow clear basket entrance. Simply spread the hinge pin with a sheath knife or similar object and rotate apex tray from the yoke. Repeat until all trays are removed. If apex was shipped with an inner basket pre-installed, simply squeeze the two keyhole release tabs on the cover to lift it. Then disengage the locking tab with a sheath knife and rotate to release the second pin. Set aside all trays in a safe location until needed. Release apex from the stand and orient as desired for cable entry. Ports 1 and 2 will be used in this video for entry of backbone cable. The closure will be on the stand with the basket upside down for ease of installation. To open the apex ceiling wedge, depress locking tab and slide ceiling wedge down toward the bottom of the base release latch. Slowly rotate the top of the ceiling wedge from the base and remove orange port plug as wedge is released. Set aside port plug if a cable will be installed in this port. If cables are not to be installed, keep port plugs in place to maintain watertight seal. Manually depress both sides of base gel. Each time a ceiling wedge is removed, manually ensure the gel compression screw is in the fully relaxed open position and extend the wedge ceiling gel as shown. Set aside ceiling wedge in a clean, safe location. If gel block is exposed to dirt or debris, simply rinse the gel with cold water to remove contaminant. If the base gel has been released from the base, simply replace it in the proper orientation with the locking tabs engaged in the bottom of the base as shown.
Each Apex closure comes with a cable attachment unit kit, which contains the cable attachment unit, hose clamp, and spur bracket for sheath retention. Strength member retention is built into each cable attachment unit. If the cable is less than one half inch in diameter, electrical tape will be needed. With wrapping tube cable, there is no central strength member or side strength members to retain. They are bonded to the cable jacket. The sheath will protect the fiber from the rough edge that remains. For wrapping tube cable, break the cable attachment unit at cut line, discard CSM retention. Since there are no strength members in wrapping tube cable, the sheath may be cut at the cable attachment unit or it can be run to the basket. You may also run the water block tape to the basket by leaving 10 inches of water block tape beyond the sheath cut for added protection. Fiber and water block tape will be secured at the basket yoke. With low fiber count, small diameter wrapping tube cable, tape it at the point where it is secured by the spur clamp. Build small diameter cable up to one half inch with electric tape to engage properly with the spur bracket. Ensure the cable is clean and free from contaminants prior to installing in the cable attachment unit. The cleaned area should extend from the hose clamp to the end of the gel exiting the base. If wrapping tube cable is armored, the armored layer must end at the cable attachment unit sheath retention point. When preparing armored wrapping tube cable, extend the rip cords one inch past the armored sheath end. Local practices will define shield bond connector. For mid-sheath installation, remove all twist from the cable prior to installing the cable attachment unit to prevent issues with binder orientation. Note the orientation of the cable strength rods and the position of the cable in the cable attachment unit bracket prior to securing the ground attachment. The final position of the ground attachment should put the ground lug on the side as the cable attachment unit is installed. Slide ground plate attachment into armored layer. Once seated in the proper position, assemble ground retention. Tighten ground on armor per manufacturer's recommendations. Once the location for cable attachment is determined, orient the cable attachment unit and slip the hose clamp around cable as shown. The hose clamp gear should nest into the cable attachment unit bracket. Once the hose clamp is engaged, slip the spur bracket in place in the proper orientation. There are two orientations to install the spur bracket. Ensure it is installed on the cable with the opening end toward the closure basket. This device is used to enhance pull-out strength. For wrapping tube cable, it is recommended that the cable orientation remains similar to rod position for coiling. Leave the hose clamp snug and tighten the base with the other cable present. If installing armored cable, align ground stud just above cable attachment unit and rotate toward the side for clearance when installing the ground lug. Ensure the hose clamp is nested in the cable attachment unit properly prior to installation. Guide the cable attachment unit into the base and route the fiber to the basket opening. Be careful that the fiber is not pinched. Lower cable attachment unit onto base alignment tab. Ensure it is properly seated with the hose clamp tail retained in proper position and then tighten with a can wrench. Make a final check of alignment of wrapping tube cable rods, ground location and clearance of ceiling wedge. Then secure hose clamps completely. Be careful not to over tighten as it may damage the fiber or cause temporary attenuation. Once the cable attachment unit and the hose clamp are secured, Inspect the cable attachment unit to ensure it is completely seated. Make sure both base gel and ceiling wedge gel are clean and free of contaminants. Depress base gel and elongate ceiling gel as shown each time installing a ceiling wedge. The Apex closure has ceiling wedge engagement pins and wedge base mounting locations.
Engage sealing wedge into apex base by mating two lower tabs in the port opening and slowly rotate toward the top of the closure. Once closed, depress sealing wedge latch and rotate sealing wedge into locked position. Inspect top and bottom of sealing wedge to ensure it is properly installed. For all cables under one half inch, install small cable bushing over cable and secure with supplied tie wrap. Make sure the head of the tie is in the opening on the bushing. Tighten to just close bushing, but not deform it. Slip bushing up to port and engage the bushing past the gel fingers. This cannot be done if gel compression screw is engaged. Install material near the apex basket yoke to secure backbone cable to basket using Velcro or tie wraps. Once backbone cables have been installed and sealing wedges are secured, release the apex closure from the stand and rotate it 180 degrees with the basket facing down. Be careful not to damage any cables, tubes, or fibers while rotating the apex closure. Secure apex with basket resting on support and engage locking tabs. Secure fiber cable or tubes on basket close to the yoke using Velcro, foam retention, or tie wraps. Tighten all six gel compression screws prior to final assembly of apex. Secure apex ground cable to shield bonding kit before or after wedge placement.